Hey there, it's Wendy, the face behind Wendy Workart on Instagram. So today we're gonna go through step five in this process of making paint skin jewelry. So step number one was mixing the paint. Step number two was pouring the paint and making an actual paint skin. Uh, step number three was cutting out the paint skin with those little hole punches. And then four was gluing the cabochon on the paint skin. That was the, the last step we did. So today what we're gonna be doing is cutting the trim off of the paint skin. And then we'll also be sealing the back of the cabochon or the back of the paint skin so that when you glue them down into the bezels, you don't get bubbles eventually because bubbles will form underneath eventually if you don't seal them. Uh, this is something I learned over years of trying to get this right. Um, and that is the key to not getting those like silvery little um, little bubbles, like kind of pockets under the um, paint that, or actually it's above the paint and below the glass piece that we all notice when we try making these, if you've ever tried making these before. Um, that is what I found to be the key. So we'll go over that today. So what I'm gonna do is bring you down um, so you can see my workspace and I'll show you the materials, everything we'll need, which isn't much, and we'll get to work. Okay, so what we'll need for this video today is a pair of scissors and Mod Podge. Uh, I don't really think it matters if it's the matte kind or glossy or whatever. Uh, I don't think that really matters all that much, but this is what I've been using for, uh, I don't know, four years now. So this is what seems to work for me. Um, okay, so what we're going to do first is peel this backing off. So this is the freezer paper. So you have to peel that off and just discard that. And then sometimes you'll notice that the back sides are pretty cool. This one's not that cool, but sometimes they're really cool and you kind of wish that you'd have did the other side instead. So always make sure you uh, check the back of your paint skins if you can't find any cool ones um, on the front part. Peel it off the paint the, off of the freezer paper and you might find that there's really cool designs on the back if you're lucky. Okay, so you'll see that there's this extra um, paint skin on the outside. So what we're going to do is get close to the edge and we're just going to cut around that. So pretty simple. Just make sure that you're somewhat careful because sometimes this paint can get a little um, brittle, I guess would be the best word. And when you go to cut, it might cut in to so where you can see through to the glass. I've had that happen before and sometimes I can't fix it and sometimes I can, if, like it was a solid part, um, I can take that colored paint and go over the back and cover that up. Um, but I have had it where it couldn't be fixed. So I just had to toss it. So there, it actually happened a little bit right there. You can see that. But it's not enough you can't see it on this side, maybe like a tiny bit actually. So I might have to take a little paint, maybe a navy blue and put it right there. So, but it's not so bad where I have to toss it. But that's funny that it happened. You don't wanna overcut. So that's good enough. Just so that when you run your thumb along the outside, you don't feel like paint. Oh, I can feel it a little bit over. So you can't feel paint kind of coming over the edge. You just feel the edge of the glass. Okay, so that one's good. So we'll do, that was a 35 millimeter. Now we'll do a 25. So we're gonna peel that freezer paper off the back. Same thing. We're gonna just cut around the edge. It's actually best to probably cut like a little bit at a time instead of like trying to go around, you know, and get a big slice off. I do that sometimes, but I can tell by the way this paint is today, it's, this is, is a little brittle for some reason. I'm not really sure why that happens, but when, it, when you can feel that, just don't over cut it. Don't cut too much. 
Don't try to trim it up too much if that makes sense. Okay, so that one's good. We're gonna keep them bottom side up. So we'll do these earrings. Okay, so now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Mod Podge um, and what I'm going to do is just get a little bit on my finger, well quite a bit actually because I'm going to start with these bigger 35 millimeters. I'm going to take at the center, put a little dab like that and then go in a circular motion kind of cover it in a, not a real thick layer, but a layer that um, you can't see any of like the darker paint through. Like you want to make sure it's all covered in an equal layer. Okay, so that one's done there. Grab some more. There you go, that looks good. That one's a little thicker layer, that's all right. And then 25 millimeter, cover that. Little guys. I always do the bigger ones first because then I usually have enough paint left on my finger that I can, or uh, glue left on my finger that I can go cover these smaller ones. Last little one. I usually do big batches of these. This is probably the smallest batch ever. There. Okay, so then now what I do is I let these dry until you cannot see any more of the white paint or white glue, sorry. Um, make sure it's completely dried. So sometimes you might have to wait anywhere between 30 minutes to like two hours, depending on how thick of a layer of glue you put on there. But what that's gonna do is that's gonna seal it so that, cause it, for some reason, the diamond glaze, and I don't know, I, I don't exactly know why those bubbles pop through. If you ever notice that, those silver bubbles um, that you'll notice when you make jewelry. I struggled with that for years. I've tried so many different things to try to stop that from happening, but it always, like, Sometimes it would happen and sometimes it wouldn't. So, and I used to just put like one layer of Mod Podge on. I started with that and then they still will come through. So what I do is I put at least three layers on. So sometimes you have to do this over, you know, a couple days because you can't just sit around and wait for glue to dry. <laughs> you have to get on with your life. So sometimes um, I'll do like a layer in the morning and then a layer, you know, if I'm home for lunch and a layer in the evening or whatever. Um, but make sure you put at least three layers on because that will prevent those bubbles. And sometimes they still happen somehow. I, I don't, I'm not quite sure. So if, actually, if any of you know why that is, please comment down below and let, let us all know, enlighten us, because that's a big frustration when making this kind of uh, paint skin jewelry. So. Okay, so that is it. It's pretty simple to um, make sure you don't cut too far in on the skins and then put three, at least three layers of Mod Podge on um, or some other sealant. I don't know, maybe you guys know of a, a better sealant, but this is what I use and it seems to work pretty darn well. So, um, so if you like this video, please like this video. It really helps out in the YouTube algorithm if you like the video after you watch. Um, if you want to see more like this, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. I'll be posting at least one new video uh, each week I'm going to try for. Now that the quarantine is starting to maybe come to somewhat of an end, I'm starting to work more anyways. So 
Um, I will try my best to get out at least one new video each week. Uh, so if there are any ideas that you have on um, things that you want to learn or things you want to see me try doing, uh, please comment down below and let me know because I'd, I'd love to do what you guys want to see. Um, so any questions you have, please comment down below. Um, having to do with paint pouring or making this jewelry, anything that I forgot to cover um, or like forgot about. So just let me know and I will try to answer your question in the comment section or in a future video. Um, so the next video that I'll be posting will be step number six and that will be cleaning the jewelry. Uh, and then there will be yet another step of placing the cabochon into bezels and adding a chain. That will be the finishing step. So please like this video and until next time, keep pouring and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.